Good afternoon. It's uh, late in the day on a Friday. I'll, I'll try and keep the pace up. And uh, I'm here to talk about uh, the future of ORTC with WebRTC. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ju Justin and Serge for a uh, fabulous segue that they gave me to, uh, to this subject. Now, if I can get the clicker going here, I'll be golden. Uh, I'm good here. So uh, just a little bit about HookFlash and who we are. Um, HookFlash is the founder, chair, and editor of ORTC. We're kind of the guilty party for causing some of the confusion that has existed around this, but uh, we, we thought it was a, a critically important issue. And um, we're, uh, we've been focused on it for I probably the better part of the last two years. We're a distributed virtual team of developers and engineers with guys currently in US, Canada, and Serbia. Uh, our technology focus is very predominantly on ORTC, and we also have done extensive work on new WebRTC signaling, uh, security, and identity protocol with a, a technology we have called OpenPeer. Uh, we work with large enterprise customers, technology service providers, and carriers on uh, the new buzzword in enterprises, digital transformation with real-time communications. And uh, before I jumped into the remarks, I, w I needed to speak to, you know, what in fact is ORTC? And if you go to ORTC.org, and as you heard from Google, uh, Justin and, and Serge earlier, ORTC is essentially uh, an evolution of the WebRTC API, and, and the definition is here at from ORTC.org. But the way I wanted to share it with you was really in a top 10 format of 10 of the top benefits that the developer community and customers will potentially enjoy as we, we get the ORTC li library finished and available to the world at large. So there's a lot of text on these slides, but I promise we'll get through it quickly and, and get, have uh, Bernard, our guest from Microsoft, join us. Um, we'll make this content available through Cranky Geek and WebRTC Hacks and whoever else wants HookFlash and ORTC.org. Um, so the number, I'll start at number 10 and count down to our number one. So the, the number 10 benefit is it, it enhances direct programmer control over the media pipeline. So it gives the developers a greater de degree of control. Justin did a great job of speaking to access at the object level, and you'll see a lot of the benefits kind of flow from that. Um, number nine, signaling flexibility. So ORTC does not require offer answer exchange to be repeated every time you change the media. Um, it, it allows you to uh, not, not deal with uh, a round trip exchange every time that a transaction takes place. And this is valuable to um, an increasing number of companies and developers who are innovating away from SIP for over the top applications. Media forking is uh, really just allows ORTC to use the same set of ports, and uh, that'll that'll be a, a benefit we'll see with ORTC. Uh, one of the number seven, one of the core attributes of ORTC of ORTC, and really the architect fundamental to the architecture is it's it can be asymmetric. So WebRTC is originally can conceived was one mic and camera to one mic and camera. And as we see the evolution of the standard, we, we're opening up asymmetric applications. So you can imagine multi-cameras, multi-mics, multi-real-time media from one end without having to have symmetric connections on the other. Number six, simulcasting and scalable video coding. Uh, native uh, to the new ORTC application. Number five, 
uh, capabilities exchange. So this allows remote side um, to uh, essentially it's po polling and interrogation uh, so that I can get a clear vision and understanding of what the other side of my peer-to-peer -peer connection is doing. And you could imagine the value pool applications that we'll see with that kind of <coughs> capabilities exchange. Number four, SDES, SRTP, transport. And it, that's really all around easier uh, integration of legacy devices. Number three, IPv6 and mobile networks, and uh, th this is uh, already available in Chrome, thanks to the kind of progress that Google shared with us in the previous session. And uh, it is also available to you in the ORTC library uh, that is underway and, and partially available now. Um, and as, as we get to the, top, the last couple of benefits, uh, and the Google guys referred to them, it's obviously an incredibly mobile-centric world, and our ability to leverage something as exciting and powerful as WebRTC for mobile is incredibly important, and the, the founding vision around uh, the work on ORTC has has been to optimize it for mobile to the highest degree possible. So the ORTC SDKs for iOS, Android, and WinRT are optimized for things like backgrounding and all the challenges you have in mobile network conditions. And finally, uh, what my co-founder partner, Eric Lagerway, I think is most excited about and uh, is, is the capabilities on mobile network handoff in ORTC. And I've highlighted the ORTC lib as a new technology called continuous nomination, which uh, allows for di really dynamic network management um, as, as you're roaming between a variety of cellular infrastructure and Wi-Fi. Uh, as you can certainly appreciate the complexities of moving across networks on a mobile device and maintaining live real-time communications. And there's some incredibly exciting progress on ORTC relative to those kind of issues. Uh, it's been great to hear the tone today and and there was some wonderful progress at the W3C meetings in Redmond this week. And the industry has come together to try and collectively help address this question. Are, the, are these somehow competing standards? Are, the, are they in conflict? Do I have to choose? And that WebRTC, ORTC roadmap is really getting increasingly clearer, hopefully you leave here today with that clear understanding that, that this is evolution and integration. I wanted to quote, uh, uh, Justin updated this for us today. We had a similar quote the better part of a year ago, I think. So WebRTC 1.1 is our proposal for how we can accomplish the following two things. New set of APIs for direct control based on ORTC and integration with the existing WebRTC so that we maintain backwards compatibility. As an evolution of the existing API, we consider WebRTC, at the time of the quote, it was 1.1, one, one. I understand now it's NV, which yeah, kind of like NV is good. So, but um, the, you know, the point here, we see commitment and endorsement uh, of this roadmap by Google uh, in June of this year, the W3C invited HookFlash co-founder Eric Lagerway to co-chair the W3C standards work and their public announcement relative to Eric joining the W3C board working group was uh, as the new charter sets the path for convergence started in the ORTC community group 
we expect Eric essentially to deliver as much progress on possible as possible on the path to convergence. So we see Google, we see the W3C working toward co convergence of the valuable pieces of both these standards. And, and it's now, uh, I'm very pleased to introduce our friend from Redmond, uh, Bernard Aboba, principal architect at Microsoft Skype to speak to Microsoft's work around ORTC. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> See if we can get Bernard here. Yeah, so uh, do you want me to turn the slides and I can certainly do that. If you want to, yeah, if you, you want to click the slides, I'd probably do okay, So I'll, I'll do, uh, do the screen share. And and okay, hold on. Let's see, uh, hopefully I can make it through that. Uh, there we go. Cool. All right. Um, so I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the uh, Edge platform and the roadmap for that. Hopefully you can uh, see the yeah. slide. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> I think we just found the screen sharing bug. Yeah. Okay, we've got the slide up. We're, I understand you've had a busy week out there, Bernard. Yeah. Uh, so let me let me just talk a little bit about the IE platform. Uh, so the dev.modern.ie website lists all of the features for the roadmap of Edge. And let me just talk through the way you can interpret this and also the way you can get access to the features as they become available. So everything on that site that uses the term supported means that that feature has already shipped within Edge on Windows 10. Some of them are also supported down level on Internet Explorer, but everything that says supported is in fact supported in Edge. So if you get a copy of Windows 10 in Edge, you can use those features today. Now, where a feature says it's in development, such as ORTC, what that means is that feature will become available uh, initially through the Windows Insider Preview Program. And so if you are sign up for that program, and I'll give you a URL for that, you can get builds of Win 10 that contain all the features that are listed in development. That includes currently ORTC as well as uh, BP9, which Justin talked about. Um, so one question I've gotten is when will those individual features become available? And so the answer is they become available when the features are merged from the private builds uh, into the main Win 10 build. And then that build is in, in turn uh, pushed out through the Windows Insider preview program. Um, ORTC has been merged into the main build. So uh, it shouldn't be too long before you will see that in the Windows Insider uh, preview program. I'm not exactly sure when VP9, whether it has been merged or will be merged, uh, but at some point you will see that also in the Windows Insider preview program, uh, and then eventually in uh, Windows 10 as those features get released. So let me talk a little bit about uh, what's in uh, ORTC and what you, you should expect there. So back in October in 2014, we actually had a blog entry uh, and you can look that up also on dev.modern.ie, which talked about the features that we had committed to uh, back then. And we've gotten most of, of that work done, particularly on the audio side. So in that blog, we talked about supporting G711, G722, and Opus. Um, and so we have all of those codecs uh, checked in. In addition, we talked about other basic audio things that are in the WebRTC audio requirements, things like comfort noise uh, and DTMF, and, and that is there as well. On the video side, in that blog, we talked about supporting H.264, uh, and we still have, that is one thing that you will not see in the preview program, interoperable H.264, um, because we still have more work to do to, to get some of the basic video uh, elements of the platform in. However, we do have uh, support for something we call H.264UC, which is an implementation of RFC 6190, which is H.264 uh, with scalable video coding. And this is a, a codec that supports both spatial scalability, so, sorry, spatial simulcast and temporal scalability um, through H.264 SVC. So that's kind of the basic video uh, codec that's in there at, 
that you will see in the preview program. Uh, and we will continue work on interoperable H.264 so that we can interoperate with uh, Mozilla and Chrome uh, going forward. And that will require a little bit of more work on the video platform as well as uh, on the video codec transport itself. Um, so I know there's going to be questions about VP9. So I just wanted to clarify a few things. There is a, a blog that I'll give you a point or two that describes exactly what will, you will see in the Windows Insider Preview program as far as VP9 support. Um, that is currently a decoder oriented towards streaming media. So it goes along with the, the Dash support uh, and streaming support that you've seen in Windows 10 already. Uh, so that's what will be there. There is not currently a support for VP9 encoder. Um, and the focus is on streaming media. So you will not uh, see VP9 supported within the preview program in ORTC, but basically the decoder and the streaming support is there. Uh, you will see it in v, uh, for VP9 uh, come out in the Windows Insider preview program. Although I'm not exactly sure what, what build that will be in I, uh, and whether it'll be in the same build as the one in which you'll see uh, ORTC. So um, also a few other little things. I, I think as has already been mentioned, uh, Get User Media did ship in Windows 10 RTM, uh, and that is already supported in Adaptive.js. So you should be able to run all the examples on GitHub, the WebRTC samples, and they should run at Edge. Uh, and if there are any bugs, you can let me know or other folks. Um, and uh, we did have a Skype blog a while back about Skype for Web. Uh, and that basically currently depends on a plugin, but will be moving towards plugin free support over time. Um, and so you keep your eyes peeled. There probably will be something along those lines talking about uh, support uh, for that as well. So I thought I would open it up basically to questions now and, and try to answer the things that are on your mind. Yeah, so um, yeah, so keep your eyes peeled. Basically, our plan is when we release major new features in, through the Windows Insider Preview Program, there's typically a blog that goes along with it, kind of giving developers an introduction to the feature, what's there, what's not there, et cetera. Um, and we already have posted blogs on um, media capture functionality in May, and then more recently on VP9 uh, with respect to the support there, kind of clarifying what you'll see um, and what you should expect as a developer. And I would expect a blog entry for ORTC when, when that is uh, coming out in the preview program as well. All right. We have you back up on the big screen now, Bernard. So okay. I think if, if you're ready, we'll start to, uh, we'll, we'll take some, some questions from the audience. I'll okay. probably go That's out fine. and I'll, we'll ask uh, Trent to, uh, to, to repeat for you if necessary. UN you interpreter. Okay <laughs> yeah, happy to help. Thanks, Jeff. Questions for Bernard or, or for Trent? Justin? Uh, Bernard, do you have any sense? You mentioned that VP9 won't be supported in WebRTC uh, in this new preview, but is there any sort of sense when that would be supported? Yeah, so I think I heard the question about VP9. So, um, so let me talk a little bit about uh, the work that needs to be done to support um, H.264 uh, interoperable h store because uh, it's a lot of the same work that would be needed for any additional codec. So basically what we have today is what we call H264 UC, um, and that includes support for a number of feedback messages, for example, uh, but not all the ones which you would need for, for good interoperability. Um, there's also uh, would be work done in the video platform for things like bandwidth estimation um, and uh, so forth. And so basically we need to put that foundation in place uh, before we can have uh, interoperability really with any codecs. Uh, and so that the first evidence of that work having been done would be H.264. And once we've kind of got that, um, then we would be able to add uh, more potential video codecs on top of that. The other thing is because I mentioned that we had a decoder in VP9 is obviously uh, you, would, you would need to have uh, an encoder as well. And then there are uh, issues of the hardware uh, support and so forth. So um, that's kind of another element is supporting uh, hardware acceleration. Um, we do have that for H.264 UC. Um, and so I'm assuming that won't be a huge work item for H.264, uh, but, but that would be another thing. We generally like to have hardware acceleration when we release codecs so that it'll, everything runs smoothly. Uh, but I, 
I have no idea when all of that work would uh, get done. We basically have to make the platform uh, functional before any additional codex would come in. Um, and we don't have a we don't have a plan for all of that work right now. So um, I'm not giving any dates even for H.264. Okay. Other other questions? I wonder if you could clarify just the overall time frame for the Edge browser with a completely running WebRTC all ready for developers. You know, what kind of time frame are we looking at? Well, for the for the Windows Insider preview, like as I've said, uh, ORTC has been integrated into the main Windows 10 build, so it's kind of more of an issue of, of build packaging and uh, putting it up on the website and so forth. So. Um, I'm not going to have a betting pool as to which day or, or week, but uh, I, there's no particular reason for the delay, which has anything to do with anything going on in, in ORTC land. Um, so I, it, it's not, I would not expect a long wait. Let me put it that way. Uh, other questions? Fippo, I know you have questions. <laughs> Yeah, so while we're waiting for a question, I'll give an answer that maybe is to a question some people have been asking about, but or maybe not. Um, so one thing people ask is, what ORTC objects have we been working on? And the answer is the, the core objects that are in 1.0 that you will be seeing hopefully in a 1.0 spec, the ICE transports, the sender, the, the uh, receiver, um, the uh, DTLS transport are all supported. We have something called the ICE gather, which is a little bit unique to ORTC, and that is there as well. Um, so basically, the core objects of ORTC, which are in both the ORTC spec and WebRTC 1.0, are the ones that we've been focusing on. Thank you, Bernard. Time for a question? Okay. Um, so actually, this is more of a general question for both the Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer teams, just browser interoperability in general and kind of a commitment to that. Like another is like going to be an adapter JS, another has been on everyone's writing the same files to make the, you know, their particular app work across all the different browsers. But, uh, you know, I guess now that Internet Explorer is on board as well, like what is the commitment there to make it work well between all the browsers? Yeah, so uh, I heard the basic question, which was about uh, adapter.js support. So as, oops, as Justin mentioned, there is work uh, going on, and I think that work is, you could say it's largely successful for get user media, but it is still work in progress for uh, ORTC. And I guess I don't want to predict the full outcome of that. I certainly hope it all works. There may be some bugs here and there. Uh, but um, I think basically keep your eyes peeled once the insider preview is out and people have had a chance to look at it, work on it a little bit more. Uh, we'll get a sense of how, how well uh, we've got adapter.js working on top of ORTC and if there are any issues or bugs or, or not. Uh, but I, I do think that's an active area that a lot of people are interested in, and so we'll have to see how it well it works. A any comments from Nils or Justin or anyone? Uh, since that was a, a question for all the browser vendors. Uh, generally speaking, <coughs> while we are trying to uh, you know snap everything to like the, the latest specifications, Adapter is a very good way to make sure you always get kind of the the spec behavior even when the, the implementations are not necessarily up to date. So like for example, you can now use promises in WebRTC in even though Chrome hasn't been updated yet if you use Adapter because Adapter gives you that promise polyfill. So I expect Adapter to still be uh, you know, sort of front and center and something you should be using in your apps to make sure you have like, uh, you know, equivalent support across browsers uh, and hopefully it'll work for uh, Edge you know, just as well. Yeah, I guess um, I think uh, um, theoretically, if we get like a 1.0 spec and everyone implements that one spec, and the spec is actually accurate, then we no longer need adapter JS. Um, but that's probably like still some time out, <laughs> I would guess. And especially if we add like ORTC to it, that will add like another variant to it. So we'll probably be stuck with adapter JS for some time. Um, but on the other hand, if we if we don't, then that probably also would mean that we don't have any new development going on anymore. So, thanks. I think we're we're running out of time. Thank you so much for for joining us, Bernard. It's really been helpful. And thank you, Trent.
Thank you. Thanks very much, Chad. Thank you.